man. Summer is here. Okay, maybe not there, but summer's coming. And I'm ready. <laughs> Matter of fact, my buddies are ready. You ready? That's obnoxious, isn't it? Boy, can you imagine waking up to that? My poor wife, as soon as I bought her one of those, I had to go get another one. I think we had four of them on the floor. What a great way to rejoice, right? <laughs> Not. Anyways, I was thinking, you know, we ought to do that every time somebody's got a gripe. You know, every time you got some kind of complaint, every time you got some kind of anxiety or depression or some kind of like, you know, mixed up idea of what you think you really got to worry about, we ought to just go ahead and give you one of these. Yeah, that'll wake you up. That'll change your attitude, wouldn't it? It'll either push you over the top, or it'll get you back to a sense of humor. Because, you know, God has a sense of humor. I mean, I think he's got a sense of humor. I don't know if you think he's got a sense of humor, but I think if you read the Bible, you know he has a sense of humor. Because what we're doing is we're looking at It's Your Move by Franz Rittenauer, and guess what we're going to do? We don't take it too serious, but we do want you to kind of look at it. You know, the cartoons that are there. Just so you get kind of an idea of what we're talking about when we're reading it and going through this, because we want you to rejoice in what you're doing. Not get all bummed out, burned out, and blown out, because, yeah, maybe it is the end of the world. Duh! And maybe a lot of people are going to hell. Duh! But do you think that it's going to change anything? No! So you might as well rejoice. Come on, man. Kick it. Enjoy it. You know, God's got it under control, doesn't he? He better. So anyways, we're taking, for example, Noah and his ark. You know, Noah's, Noah's story has been told so often in Sunday school lessons and sermons that we sometimes slip into the error of not taking it too seriously. Wait a minute, I thought you were going to take it non-seriously. You see how I'm dressed? You think I could be serious? Surely you can't be serious. So, but suppose you had been in Noah's shoes. Suppose you were Noah. Nobody knows exactly when you lived, but it was a long time ago. It was a time of incredible idolatry and immorality. Ooh, the double Ds. Sort of. <laughs> Come to think of it, it wasn't too hard to imagine now, is it? It was time of great rebellion against God. Wait a minute now, it kind of sounds familiar. Like maybe our day? <laughs> One day, apparently out of the clear blue, God communicates with you and tells you to build an ark because he plans to destroy all life with the flood. Right. I think I saw this movie. You know, the movie where, you know, the guy's going to build the ark, you know, and we kind of saw it, you know, and he was kind of getting this story together, you know, and kind of like, you know, everybody's kind of watching it and he builds this ark out in the middle of nowhere, you know, and you've seen the whole stories. Well, that's kind of the idea, but think of it personally for a minute. Think of it individually for a minute. Think about what if God spoke to you? Who? Me? Ha! I don't think so. Then again, maybe he has. Maybe he will. I don't know. One day, he plans to destroy all life, and now if you live near the sea, this would be reasonable, you know, God destroying the world, you know, and saying, okay, since we live, you know, on a plane, you know, we're flat on the ground, you know, and maybe it makes sense that, you know, the world's going to get destroyed by water. Okay. You could build the ark near the edge of the water and get some friends to help you shove it in. But you live many miles from any kind of water. Big enough to float an ark. Furthermore, it seldom rains where you live. Practically never. Now, honestly, Noah, what do you think about this? What do you think about it? In his imaginative monologue, comedian Bill Cosby catches some of the spirit of incredulity, incredulity <laughs> Noah must have felt. Because according to Cosby's version of Genesis, there Noah is sawn away in his wreck room and he says, God speaks to him and says, Noah! You ready? It's the Lord, Noah! He gets a silly smirk on his face and says, Right! <laughs> sure it is. Lord goes on to say that he wants Noah to build an ark, and Noah replies again with, I'm really hearing things kind of look on his face, you know, and he says, Right! What's an ark? 
<laughs> Finally, Noah can't stand it any longer, and he blurts out and says, Who is this, really? Am I on Candy Camera? Well, Candy Camera used to be one of those, you know, put it over a fast one on you, you know. Who's, who's putting a quickie on you? Who's pulling your leg? It's kind of like what God does to you every now and then, you know? Because you may not have known it, you may not have seen it, you don't realize it, but you know, God kind of uses your life the same way. He kind of puts you in predicaments and situations where you really got to stick your neck out and kind of like look like you've been, uh, well, what's, what's the popular word for it? You've been, I can't even think of what it's called. You made a fool of, you know, kind of like made, you know, they put out these phony, you know, things like you didn't really get arrested. Punked. There we go. God's punking you. Now, that's kind of what faith is, you know. Faith is like, you know, you've got to get out there and kind of risk being punked because God's punking you. Yeah, God, don't, don't, don't argue. No, no, I'm sorry. You might as well get used to it. It's going to happen all your life. God's going to punk you. Yep, sure is. He's going to tell you to do something. You're going to go out there to do it. You know, and guess what's going to happen? It ain't going to work out the way you thought. Matter of fact, there's another guy in the Old Testament. You know, you know the story, you know, kind of like... A, like Jonah, you know, it's kind of like, you know the story about him, kind of like, you know, jumping in the whale, you know, and kind of like getting a free ride, you know, and kind of like kicking back and watching videos in the belly, you know, and kind of like cruising along, you know, and then getting spit out on the sand, you know, and he kind of tells everybody, hey, you know what, God's going to wipe you out, so guess what, you know, history, toasted, guess what, repent, you know, and then he gets done with the message, you know, and they all repent, you know, you know the story. The only thing is, remember the rest of it, you know, where... He gets ticked off at God because God punked him. He didn't destroy the city. I've been punked. Just like God said. I knew you were going to do it. You're one of those kind of like loving, merciful gods, not a God of wrath and judgment. There you go, saving the people just because they repent. See, God likes to punk people. He likes to put you in a predicament where, you know, you got to really stick your neck out, you know, and go and do what he says, and then you look stupid. I mean, come on now. Whose reputation's at stake here? After all, we're talking about God and you. You don't want to risk being a fool, do you? Noah? Jonah? Hmm. Jesus? You know, Jesus said that, you know, that God pumped Jesus, you know. I mean, he really did. Come on now. Let's get real. Let, let's put it into perspective here. Jesus knew he's going to go through all this bad stuff, but come on now. He's going to go out the other end, you know, and he's going to bring everybody in, right? You know, so he got punked because, you know, here everybody thought he was going to die. I mean, disciples got punked, you know. Jesus told them, yeah, well, you know, I'm going to go get crucified. Ah, uh, yeah, sure you are, Lord. No, 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 you're not going to do that. Yeah, yes, I am. I really am. I'm going to rise from the dead, but, you know, sorry, I'm going to get crucified. They're going to kill me, you know, toast history. So they kind of went, yeah, right, sure, uh-huh. And then all of a sudden he died. <gasps> I've been punked. No, actually, they thought they'd been had because guess what? They saw him die, and they said, Oh, no. Oops. It's time to head for the hills. It happens to Murgatroyd exit stage right or left. But either way, let's get the hell out of here, because they're going to kill us. So long about the third day, you know, guess what? Old Mary, she comes tripping back, you know, towards the people, you know, start telling them, Hey, guess what? We've been punked. Jesus is alive. No. John starts going, See any cameras? Where's TV commercial? I got a cell phone. Hey, let's check it out. On Google. Google it. Resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. and I'm the resurrection. Does that mean he's resurrected? <gasps> Peter, let's go check it. So they realize they've been punked. So, you know, God's got a sense of humor, you know. And he's not always going to work it out the way you think about. And he's not always going to do it the way that you got it figured out. And I can tell you one thing. This trip with God, you know, when you're walking along with him and talking with him and doing his thing, you're liable to get punked. So you might as well rejoice in it. Because you know what I got for you? Me and my buddies, we could take real good care of any of that attitude that you might have about being too religious. Me and my buddies, you know, my posse here, we can take real good care of you getting too carried well but too carried away about being too holy. Me and my buddies here, we can get real good about taking care of any of that, you know, self-righteous attitude, because you know what? I could come over to your house, and I could wake you up with one of these, and guess what you'd feel like? 
You feel like you've been punked. So imagine what God could do with His Holy Spirit, man. That's just me with my buddies. So I got a word for you. Can I make a suggestion? Rejoice! 